Which social media platform should your business be on? What's up, I'm Zach. Welcome to the Mission Driven Impact YouTube channel where we help impact driven startups, nonprofits, businesses, anyone trying to make the world a better place. We're gonna help you raise awareness for your organization by clarifying your message, getting the word out, and building a loyal community of fans and supporters. Now, real quick note, if you don't take anything else away from this video, I did say platform in the singular. Too many businesses and social impact organizations in general try to go omni-channel before they're ready, right? They try to cast a wide net to capture anyone and all who will listen. Seems good in theory, right? But you know, you're giving people more potential, more opportunities to connect with you. But the result is usually that you have fewer interactions, uh, fewer meaningful interactions that actually move your business forward. And you're left thinking, well, we know we're supposed to be doing the social media thing, but we're not seeing any results from it, so why do it at all? My advice is to choose one platform that you can learn, love, and master, and then move on once you have the resources to do so. But how do you choose what that first platform should be? I've got three questions today that are gonna help you figure that out. By the way, I post a ton of videos about social media, about not social media, anything that's gonna help you grow your business, raise awareness for your organization, and have the impact that you've always wanted to have. You gotta subscribe and hit the notification bell, that way you won't miss out when a new video comes out. Question number one is how do you like to communicate? If you are any mix of small or early stage, right, you are a um, early stage startup or a small nonprofit or a small business or you know just a small marketing department, any communication you put out is more or less going to be identical to your individual self-expression, right? So if you're not filled with joy communicating in a certain way, if you're nervous or if you just um, are hesitant or you don't want to be doing something um, that you're doing, that's going to it's gonna come across in all your marketing and all your copy and all your content. So you gotta make sure that you are actually communicating in a way that you want to be communicating in. Let me break this down the way one of my business coaches broke this down for me. There are really four main mediums, media of communication. Text, image, audio, or video, right? And automatically this calls to mind certain platforms, right? If you like to read and write, a blog might be better for you. If you like to be on video or watch video, YouTube might be better for you. If you like to speak but not necessarily be watched or you like to listen to things, there's podcasts. But keep in mind that really with any platform, social media or the bigger channels like a podcast or YouTube channel or something like that, um, you, can, you can do a mixture of all of these. But I recommend choosing one primary one that you really like, um, either one that you know you already like or one that you kind of enjoy the challenge of wanting to improve, and then another one to kind of back it up. Just as an example, for me, I wouldn't say that video is something I'm like super particularly strong at, but it's something that I want to be particularly strong at, so that's why we're doing the YouTube channel. I love to write, though. I've always been a writer, and then when I consume information, I prefer to read it, actually. And so that's why we've got things like a blog or text post over on my LinkedIn. You should connect with me, link down in the description. But you know, you gotta choose what works for you and how you like to communicate. Question number two is where is your audience actually active? Don't make the mistake I did. I spent so much time and energy trying to like make Facebook work for one of my old business ventures. And then I realized the people that I was trying to reach, they're not on Facebook, right? So it doesn't matter how well you communicate if you're communicating to an empty room or if you're talking to the wrong people, right? That's why in my coaching program, so much of what we do is focus on who are our people? Who are we really trying to reach and serve? Where can we go find them? You gotta ask yourself the same question. Another angle you can approach this from is thinking, how does your audience like to consume information? This is absolutely something that you should be getting from your customer service uh, interviews, your audience research, your market research. If you haven't done that before, you need some help, I'll leave a link in one of the eyes in the corner to three questions you need to be asking to create an effective marketing strategy. You gotta be out there talking to your people and you need to ask them how they like to consume information. Do they like to um, you know, watch videos? Do they like to listen to podcasts? Do they like to read blogs or other publications, newspapers, magazines? Um, knowing how your audience likes to consume information can also give you clues as to where you might be able to best reach them, right? If your audience is highly visual, Instagram is gonna be um, a potential candidate, right? If your audience likes to watch videos, well, chances are they're probably hanging out 
somewhere like YouTube, you know, just to guess. There are a lot of other places, but, you know, this will give you clues to where you can get started on your journey. Question number three, which social media platform are you committed to learning? Now, social media results don't come right away. And the reason, the typical reason for that is because you're not going to be good at it once you first start. Every platform has a learning curve. Every platform has its own learning curve. Not to mention that they're all introducing new features all the time, taking some features away. Algorithms change all the time. Audiences are changing. You really have to do a lot to keep up with what is effective on one platform at a time. You see right away, if you start spreading yourself to two, three, four platforms, you're really gonna start spreading yourself too thin. Choose one to learn and to master. Let me give you some general direction to the most popular social media platforms. And I emphasize general because every business is different, every audience is different, every marketer who's going to be in charge of this communication is different. So you really need to treat it like an individual circumstance. But in general, LinkedIn is great for B2B, business to business. It's a very business oriented platform, of course. So if you're providing technical assistance, if you're doing some sort of corporate philanthropy or targeting other businesses for partnerships in your social enterprise, LinkedIn is really gonna be probably the way you should go. Instagram, on the other hand, tends to target a little bit of a younger, more consumer crowd, um, teenagers, young adults. It's great if you have visuals, if you're a product-based business, um, or if you have a lot of people that you wanna show off. If you said that, uh, if you identified as someone who really likes to communicate through visual, uh, through images and things like that, Instagram, probably no better platform for it. Um, and then, you know, Facebook, of course, is the kind of catch-all B2C, business to consumer uh, platform. There's a ton of engagement on Facebook, right? People are liking and commenting on Facebook more than any other platform. Um, and Facebook groups can be really powerful for doing market research and for reaching a very targeted audience. Um, I saw a commercial the other day that was for like houseplant hobbyists or something, right? There are, there's a Facebook group for basically anything. And so you can, um, you can really reach a lot of people on Facebook. If you don't know where to start, that's usually what I recommend. Also, do not be afraid to start exploring other platforms like TikTok, Clubhouse. You know, uh, I think that there is a certain danger to this um, where yeah, a lot of things come into fashion and then fade away. You know, a lot of nonprofits especially were like really caught up in whether they should be on Snapchat or not. And now I don't know anyone who uses Snapchat. Um, you know, who's to say what platforms might come and go, but you know, again, it depends on where your audience is, how they like to consume information and where you want to be, since you're going to be the one stepping into that room. One of my coaching clients uh, is having a lot of really great success with TikTok. Not something I know a lot about, but you know, you can apply the same social media principles to a lot of these different platforms. So my point is don't be afraid to go out and explore. You might notice that a key theme here is to start small and keep things simple. That's what I'm all about because, you know, if you are running a social impact organization, whether you're an entrepreneur, a founder, an executive director, whatever your role is, chances are you've got a lot of other things to be doing rather than just social media. In fact, you probably have more to be doing than just marketing. So simplicity is something that you should be honoring, I think, in all your business, but especially in your marketing if you need results from not that much time and not that much resources spent just experimenting. If you need help keeping things simple and actually getting results from it, then I want you to click the link down in the description. I've got a 12 week one-on-one -on -one coaching program that takes social impact leaders from not even really knowing what to do or where their next step should be in marketing, all the way to building out a whole system where we leverage the power of your story and your impact to bring the right people to you on autopilot. Click the link, check it out, and book a call with me. It's totally free. It'll just take 30 minutes of your time. If I think you're a great fit for one of my programs, I'm definitely gonna tell you about it. If not, I'm gonna give you my recommendation for the next step to go, literally handing the prescription over to you. So you can't lose. Book a call with me. I'll see you in the next one.